There, it's me, Stephen Thomas, with yet another housing debrief. Thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. And if you want a copy of the housing debrief, you need to be a subscriber. We'll send it to you. We're, uh, we were automatically sending it to everybody, but there was some confusion there. So if you are a subscriber, you want a copy of this, please reach us at info at reportsonhousing.com. Now, big news is that the Federal Reserve met uh, yesterday, uh, they met this week, and Jerome Powell had his speech yesterday and a Q&A, and also were released what they call the Fed dots. These Fed dots. This is the month of June. Then this is the month of uh, September. Right now, you don't see a whole heck of a lot of difference, but I can break it down for you nicely. Statista did something for us, and that is, you can see that there, uh, the red line was the June projection, and the blue is the September projection. And by the end of the year, they think there might be one more quarter point hike. For next year, uh, you could see that the blue bars, uh, the, that the September projection that just came out yesterday, is that rates are not going to ease that much in 2024. The red was where they thought that they were uh, uh, back in June. And the same thing for 2025. So what this kind of talks about is that interest rates are going to remain higher for longer based upon where they think the economy and everything's gonna go. But I will say one thing, they have no clue where the economy is going to go. They do not know. So right now, before everybody was penciling in some rate cuts by the end of this year or, the, or, or sometime into 2024 uh, at a much earlier uh, time period. And now it's, we will get to that, but it's gonna be later and it's not gonna be as much. So everybody was thinking uh, a Fed pivot. Now they're saying later, and I think they're wrong on both sides. It's going to be somewhere in between. Um, and uh, I do want every uh, want, do request that everybody please tap on that like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That would be absolutely fantastic if you did. And uh, now let's dive into housing prices to fall when rates drop. Now you're wondering, where in the world did I come up with this title? Well, uh, on YouTube, it, there was uh, CNBC had a, uh, they had this program called Last Call, and they had a CEO of uh, Brown Harris Stevens who said, when mortgage rate prices start to fall, housing prices will follow. That, that is the, the sentiment. And when I saw this, I'm not kidding you, you have to understand that when I see things like this, uh, it, it just makes me a little crazy. So I end up, uh, our entire staff gets uh, a copy of this YouTube article for them to review so they could see what other people are saying. I'm always looking for uh, good analysis and statistics to back it up. But yet there really weren't statistics to back this up, uh, even though this was the claim that was made. And I wanna get into it because right now the overall economy is extremely strong. It's a lot stronger, a lot more robust than everybody had originally anticipated. But eventually, with all the rate hikes, it is going to take time. The, the uh, overall economy will slow down. And, uh, but there is a giant lag to when things slow down. There, we're definitely going to see this in the business sector, the commercial uh, real estate sector. There are, a, there are headwinds that are growing stronger. And so there is a, a, a lag to when the economy slows. And as the economy slows down the road, what there is is this flight to safety for investors. What they start to do is they're no longer looking for uh, a quick return on their cash because they know that the economy is slowing down. So where do they like to park their money? They like to park their money in long-term assets like government bonds. And as a result, we get mortgage rates that drop when that happens. But I do want to uh, talk about uh, this this effect that that uh, nobody's really t talking about on the on the uh, uh, on on the. Uh, listing side of things, the inventory, you could see that there is this issue of hunkering down, that that homeowners are not moving because they are locked into these low mortgage rates. We've talked about it before, and this is, uh, California is a bit better than the rest of the nation, but the rest of the nation follows suit. Uh, uh, very similar to this, you could just uh, drop these numbers down a little bit. Uh, but for Californians that have a mortgage, 87% have an interest rate of 5% or lower, 69% have an interest rate of 4% or lower, and 30% have an interest rate of 3% or lower. And as a result, 
there are fewer homes that have been coming on the market for a very, very long time. Now, uh, you could see here in 2023, there's this big chunk of missing homeowners. This is the number of homeowners missing compared to the three year average when things were normal prior to COVID. Uh, and that big chunk in 2023 beats all of 2022 and we still have uh, several months of data to go for 2023 and uh, you can also see that the uh, that there are fewer homes on uh, homeowner, homeowners on the market we also have uh, fewer sales taking place so there are homeowners that have not been able to list for uh, a long time and we also you could see it reflected in this is partially because of high rates in, in impacting affordability, but it's also because fewer homeowners coming on the market. And you could see that for 12 months straight, that every single month uh, we've had fewer and fewer uh, closed sales. The difference year over year is starting to get less and less, but we're also comparing it to uh, August of, of 2023 to August of 2022. And for the rest of the year, it's probably gonna get a lot smaller, but that's because we were doing a lot uh, a lot smaller numbers towards the end of the year in terms of closed sales. Now, as a result of people hunkering down in their houses, not a lot of transactions taking place, we have a, a we have uh, homeowners that would really like to sell but have not sold and, and and have not placed their homes on the market. And you can see it here. This is a study, Keeping Current Matters uh, showed this study. This study was actually done by Zillow, who can afford some really bright economists. And this is our quarterly survey of homeowners' intentions and preferences. And you can see that the quarterly, they ask homeowners uh, if they plan on moving within the next th uh, three years. And you can see what's happened recently. There's been this spike. It's almost one out of every four homeowners is planning on moving within the next three years and what that is is over time we've had fewer and fewer uh, homeowners coming on the market to sell and there are people that want to move because their family's expanding they want to be closer to kids they uh, want to downsize there's a number of life reasons why people want to move and what the argument is is since there's this pent up seller uh, sellers that are out there that as a result we have it will have this flood of sellers to hit the market. Now, keep in mind, since 2013, I've heard about this flood of sellers that are going to hit the market. That's just not gonna happen. Uh, they, they think that these flood of sellers are gonna hit the market and there's gonna be a number of, of uh, for sale signs. It's the argument that's been said over and over again. It's Airbnb argument that we talked about last week. It is the uh, silver tsunami is what people talked about for, for a while there. There are so many different narratives that are out there for why all of a sudden a number of homeowners are gonna be flooding the market, yet none of them come to fruition. Um, there's basically the supply and demand uh, side of the equation. Supply has been really muted, obviously. And what they think is gonna happen, what they're alluding to, this uh, CEO, is that all of a sudden we'll get a lot more supply, demand will remain muted, and then values will drop. Uh, values drop because we have too much supply. And, uh, but that's just not even close to what it, the reality is of what how everything's going to play out once rates start to drop. I would like to uh, first, before we get into that, uh, what's really going to happen, let's talk, uh, I want to thank our sponsor, and our sponsor is uh, Prosperity Home Mortgage, Danny Valentini. He's been uh, gracious enough to sponsor us. You can reach him at 619-991-0706, that's 619-991-0706, and at, at the end of the day, experience matters. He's been helping buyers since 1987. Uh, there are, they have loan originators and processors that have worked with each other since 2006. They've been around. And this is their entire uh, staff of loan uh, officers throughout Southern California. They have them in the Coachella Valley as well. They have them in Northern California. And they deal with standard loans, conforming jumbo VA, FHA, programs designed to help buyers purchase before they sell, programs designed for borrowers with assets, programs for self-employed borrowers. They deal with it all. And you can contact Prosperity Home Mortgage, Danny Valentini at 619-991-0706. That's 619-991-0706. And now back to the program and why I strongly, 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 strongly feel 
that uh, this is not how everything's going to play out. And uh, I'll show you based upon the data and stats. There are also, besides pent up uh, homeowners that would like to sell their homes, waiting for mortgage rates to drop enough so that it would bridge the gap from where they're they're, they're enjoying these wonderful low rates to where the prevailing rates are today, which by the way, rates today actually almost hit seven and a half percent. So if you're enjoying an interest rate at 3%, it's going to be very hard to persuade somebody at 3% uh, mortgage to go ahead and list their homes, get a new uh, home with a mortgage at seven and a half percent. You can see how when, once value, once uh, interest rates come down, that as a result, there will be more homeowners that come on the market. So, uh, but just as uh, there are uh, the, uh, on the, the list side, there's homeowners that don't want to come on the market. There are uh, buyers that are sitting on the fence waiting for interest rates to come down. There are a lot of millennials that want to purchase that have been waiting for mortgage rates to come down. So there's this other set of potential buyers that are sitting on the sideline that are waiting for the market uh, uh, to improve with lower mortgage rates to increase affordability. And as interest rates fall, you can see here that there is a giant impact on affordability. And we're very close to 7.5% today. And if you want a $2,500 per month principal and interest with 20% down, you're looking at today about a $447,500 house. And you can see as interest rates fall, what happens is you're able to afford more house at the same exact payment. At 7%, it's at 470. Earlier this year, we were at 6% and there's a lot of people calling for interest rates to go uh, to 6% sometime next year. You're looking at a $521,250 house, a $550,000 house at 5.5%, which is where some uh, experts think that uh, mortgage rates will go. Averaging out 6% for 2024 is what uh, uh, a, a, a few uh, economists that I follow are now uh, talking about. So you can see that, there, that what happens is the uh, affordability is impacted by these mortgage rates coming down and you can afford more homes. So you're going from a $447,500 home all the way to a $550,000 home, an extra $100,000 of buying power once interest rates uh, get down to 5.5%. So uh, you, you can understand that this is really going to impact uh, the demand side of things. And as rates slowly fall, you, it's like a, it's like this dimmer switch where slowly but surely more and more borrowers will qualify and will get uh, demand will start to elevate. Now that actually comes first, and we can talk. We can show you where demand is today. Demand right now. We talked about last week. Last week we're at nine thousand seven hundred and fifty-seven. That's down one percent from uh, the two weeks prior. And last year we were at the where the orange line is twelve thousand one hundred one, which is twenty-four percent higher. And pre-COVID we were at uh, that's 2017, 18, and nineteen. This is for SoCal fifteen thousand three hundred ninety-five, which is fifty-eight percent higher. And so you see where we are today. Today we're at 9,714, down and under half a percent. This is normal for this kind of time of the year for, for demand to slowly but surely go down. Uh, what's happening in inventory is not quite as normal. We'll get into that in a second. But we're at 9,714, only down a half a percent. Now, but where uh, the demand curve is, this is a snapshot of the last 30 days of pending activities. And you can see here that where the blue line is, it's far below where we were in prior years. And I like to talk about that as inherent demand. There is always demand in the market. There are cash buyers, A. There are people that uh, have to, to uh, sell because of death, divorce, illness, some life circumstances that force them to sell. So there is always inherent demand and that's about where we are right now as far as the market's concerned. Can it go down a little bit more? Sure. Can it easily, easily go back up just as fast as it goes down just based upon the uh, volatility of interest rates, but not that much of a change until we really get interest rates coming down more. And as uh, what will happen is once interest rates do go up, we're going to get this rise in demand. So we've talked about the demand side of things, which was totally left out of that CNBC uh, interview. There's already a housing shortage inventory and the housing shortage uh, uh, th that, that we're dealing with on the inventory side is just absolutely uh, 
gargantuan. It's big. I ca called it a housing crisis. When we get towards these numbers where they're at today, it's almost a housing catastrophe because of where the inventory is at right now. So uh, that's kind of where it's at right now. And this is the United States. This is where uh, all of homes are across the United States, according to National Association of Realtors. And you could see that during the Great Recession, those are those Himalayas in the middle. We had close to 4 million. We did this last week. Now, where we are today, we're a little bit over a million. You can see there just aren't that many homes on the market. So I would love for there to be more inventory, as would most buyers out there, as would anybody that's attached to real estate. They'd like to see more homeowners come on the market. That will happen in time, but we'll get into that in a second. Now, as far as uh, the inventory is concerned, in SoCal, only Orange County has peaked right now. The rest of the markets haven't quite peaked. And uh, last week, uh, Southern California was at 21,530, went up 2% in the prior two weeks. Last year, we were at 30,310, that's that orange line. A lot more homes last year compared to this year, and we are getting very, very close to a peak. You can kind of see it, because pre-COVID, that's 2017, 18, and 19, we were at 41,320, which is almost double where we are today, that purple line. And today, we're at 21,682 which is just up 0.7% from last week. So it's not going up at a great clip. It's going up slowly but surely. Typically during the autumn market, which is where we are, we have demand coming down slowly and we have the inventory coming down slowly. But we're not really dealing with a, a typical market right now, uh, except for in Orange County, like I was uh, referring to. So once interest rates do come down, there will be a lag to homeowners coming on the market. There's a lag for a variety of reasons. That lag is because there are homeowners that they will meet with uh, agents, they will interview, they will figure out what they need to do with their house to get it ready. They might even postpone it till next spring or they, they'll get their home ready to come on the market and it takes a month, two months, sometimes several months to get their home ready to be placed on the market. So that's part of that lag. So. There's no lag in demand. Once interest rates come down, demand starts. And once uh, interest rates go down for inventory, there's this lag before it comes on. And also we have to talk about those people that are hunkering down. Because for some people, interest rates will still be, the bridge will be too large for those people that have these locked in these joyous, low fixed rate mortgages. They're not going to be in a hurry to place their homes on the market. There will not be this rush to come on the market. Instead, it's going to be the slow dial. And like I said, this dial is going to be delayed and this will be easily absorbed by the extra demand that is created by interest rates coming down and affordability getting better for all those sideline buyers that are waiting for interest rates to come down. So as far as where is the speed of the market, you have to understand that the speed of the market is actually quite speedy. Last week we talked about it, we were at 66 days. It was up two days in the last uh, two weeks, in that two weeks prior. And uh, last year we were at 75 days at the same time period. Even prior to COVID, we were at 81 days. So the speed of the market is faster than where we were prior to COVID. And today it's at 67 days. So it went up slightly and that's because demand went down, inventory up just slightly. So we, we went from 66 days to 67 days. So it is continuing to, to slow. And as far as where our home value is going to, to go, well, Economics 101 tells us it's a, it's a supply and demand equation. However, it's not just supply and demand right now because we have these interest rates that are lofty and they're remaining higher for a little bit longer than what a lot of people anticipated. And these higher interest rates as a result of what the Fed has done is another factor that you have to factor into supply and demand. And uh, so there's there's a lot more movement and volatility in, uh, in, in the values based upon these higher interest rates at, at where they are today. And we have to look at specific markets to tell, uh, I could tell which ones are more balanced, which ones might be favoring a little bit more uh, sellers and some that are uh, favoring buyers, I mean sellers, but it just depends. Sellers, buyers, uh, balance. It's just, it's not like it, it was last year where we had interest rates going up and we had values coming down like crazy. That was a shock going from three and a quarter to seven, 7.37%. Now, now, right now, we're kind of staying in the same range. Yes, it's gone up from before, and that's why we have not yet quite hit a peak in inventory, but the peak is going to be occurring soon. So when interest rates fall, it will be a demand, a, a, a supply 
supply and demand story again. We will erase the uh, that interest rate variable that we had to add to supply and demand to figure out what our values are because interest rates have come down enough. That's where we eventually will go, where uh, it, it will be, a, 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 we already have very few homes on the market. It's going to create a even hotter seller's market down the road. So what will we have at that time? We'll actually have values rising and not falling. So I invite everybody to go to reportsonhousing.com. And uh, if you subscribe to the latest report, the latest report just came out for along the coast, Orange County, LA, San Diego, challenges of supply situation. And this will come out for San Bernardino Riverside in the Bay Area come next week. So challenges of supply situation, I get into how it's going to be hard to build a supply and why in this article. And if you want a free month and you want to subscribe, go to reportsonhousing.com, utilize the coupon code prices. And uh, Let's Talk Housing is our podcast. The fifth one just dropped, gosh, yesterday, and it is called A Wild Economic Week. So that was just uh, released. And uh, so you go wherever you like to hear your podcasts. Uh, but I'd like to announce one of the places where they have podcasts, Apple uh, Podcasts. We're one of the top 50 Apple Business News podcasts, and we just released this thing. So I'm quite excited. And compliments to Brennan Thomas, uh, our son, who works for us, who said, hey, Dad, you need a podcast. And sure enough, we did it. He's the one that does the interviewing uh, in that. And we go back and forth. So uh, if you have any if you have any topics or any questions and answers that you want answered in that podcast, we could do that. We can also answer some in here, but the podcast is the best forum for that. And uh, you can always reach us at info at reportsonhousing.com. Thank you again for joining us for another housing debrief. I, we really appreciate it. We uh, appreciate the opportunity to bring you the real solid facts and data so you can make good decisions for your families. It has what our whole objective is to properly set expectations. So have a fantastic finish your week. We will see you on the other side.